Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is my ranking of every League 2 clubs manager for the 2022-23 season if you do go on to enjoy today's video a like as always will be massively appreciated if you could join it 70 likes on today's video that'd be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on get your thoughts down in the comment section down below we have six different categories to go over for today's video i've looked at every single one of the current manager obviously we expect some changes between now and the end of the season so we could maybe look back on these review and rankings that i've done at the end of the season obviously compare that because i've what happens in football usually is a lot of the managers will get sacked. That is just usually something that does happen, especially in the lower leagues. I expect at least a third of these managers to probably have lost their job by the end of the season or have moved on to a better opportunity. But make sure you drop a like on today's video. Subscribe if you are new as well. And let's get into it. So here are the six categories then for today's video. We have excellent, good, average, poor, dinosaur and unproven because there's a few managers this season who haven't really had much experience as you know a first team manager so they'll be hopping into that category but we're going to go through every single one of the 24 managers in alphabetical order starting out then with johnny jackson he has been appointed as the afc wimbledon manager he has obviously been with charlton for pretty much the last 10 15 years including his playing career he's been there for a long time he obviously got the full-time managerial job at charlton didn't really work out for him he's now gone to afc wimbledon i think he he did alright at Charlton considering the resources that he had, you know, he did have a good team, but we didn't really have an outstanding squad, so I think we're going to start off with Johnny Jackson into average, fairly young manager, still got a lot of time to prove himself, but as of right now, I think he's only really done an average job at Charlton Athletic. Next up then is Barrow manager Pete Wilde, obviously started out his managerial career at Oldham Athletic, I thought he did alright there considering the circumstances, but he obviously wasn't there for all too long whatsoever, less than two months he was in the job there. He did obviously then move to Halifax where he's been there for about three seasons did very well at Halifax you know obviously won a lot more games than he lost and yeah I think he did really well to be honest with you I think Pete Wilde for the jobs that he's done I'm going to put him into the good category could maybe change down because as an actual league two manager he's not really proven himself yet but did a very good job with Halifax Town I expect um, Barrow to do a lot better this season under Pete Wilde especially if they keep recruiting in the way they have been doing they've got some very good signings in through the door next up then is Mark Hughes I mean does much really need to be said just look at that this man's managerial record. He has never managed outside of the Premier League, apart from when he obviously has been managing at my team, Bradford City. Now, don't get me wrong, we've won as many games as we have lost, but now that he's got his actual players in through the door, I really do expect us to be up there this season. Now, I know we've said that for the past couple of seasons, but this year, something just feels a little bit different about Bradford City. I think a couple more signings, we definitely could be challenging this season. Mark Hughes, no doubt, he has the best CV in the league, and it has to go into that excellent category. Call me biased all you want as a Bradford City fan, but I think if anyone debates that Mark Hughes isn't the best manager in this league, I think you're absolutely deluded, to be honest with you. Next up then is Carlisle's Paul Simpson. Had a lot of different roles at different levels throughout his time as a manager. Obviously, rejoined Carlisle back in February. Obviously, previously been there as well for a couple years, back in 2003 to 2006. So he firstly went to Carlisle before I was even born. I think for this level, though, I'm debating between average and good. I'm going to put him in average for now, but he definitely is at the... You know, right at the top of average because I think they could potentially be pushing into good. Maybe that's going to cause some debate. The fact that Simpson is lower than Pete Wilde, but as always, it is just my opinion. If you do disagree, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Next up then is Colchester United manager Wayne Brown, and I mean, if you just look at his CV, to be honest with you, he's been with Colchester and Molden slash Tiptree in and out of different roles at caretaker level, under 23s, under 18s. He has obviously been appointed as Colchester's first team manager. He did have an interim spell. Uh, as well at the end of last season. He did all right there. He won a couple more games than he did lose, but... Yeah, not for me. I don't think Wayne Brown. I'm going to put him into the poor category, potentially with the option to go into Dinosaur, just for me personally. Colchester have got a decent squad on paper. You know, they have got some good quality players and they really did struggle last season. So for me personally, he's going in poor for now. Definitely could be one to be moved down. Next up then is Crawley manager Kevin Betts here. I think this is his first full-time managerial job as a first-team manager. So can't really comment all 
all too much on that, so I am going to have to put him into the unproven category. He has had a few spells with England and a spell with Arsenal's under-23s, where he actually did all right with Arsenal's under-23s, but he's un unproven as a League 2 manager, so he's going to have to go into that category for me. Next up, then, is Alex Morris of Crew Alexandra. Took part of four games last season, and again, very similar to Kevin Betsy, just simply unproven. Hasn't managed enough games yet for us to really comment on, so he's been at Crew throughout his whole managerial career, so for me personally, he has to go into that unproven category. Next up, then, is Gary McSheffrey of Doncaster Rovers. Now, he's had a little bit more of a managerial experience than the previous two managers that we have spoken about. You know, he has managed you know, 20 eight matches in total, including his four as a caretaker manager. It's really not gone well for him whatsoever. You could argue that the resources simply weren't there for him. I think it was Richie Wellen's squad that he's inherited and it really hasn't worked out for him. But overall, you've got to work with what you've got and he simply hasn't been able to do that. He has been given the job going into next season for Doncaster Rovers. We obviously play them on the opening day. But for me personally, Gary McSheffrey is a dinosaur manager. Next up then is Gillingham boss Neil Harris. Now, wherever he has been, I think he's done a very good job, especially at Millwall. He was there for four years where he did a fantastic job with them got them to a playoff final I think in the first season then obviously got them promoted in his second season very questionable you know Steve Morrison was offside that goal still haunts me to this day didn't have his greatest spell while at Cardiff but he did in the end win more games than he lost obviously he has been at Gillingham couldn't keep them up in the end but I do think he's a very good manager at this level definitely someone who deserves to be in that excellent category very good CV very good pedigree I was surprised to be honest with you to see him stay with Gillingham when they got relegated but they've brought in some decent players as well so I'll be interested to see how Gillingham do get on next season. Next up then is Paul Hurst the manager of Grimsby Town. Now it is a bit of an interesting one to be honest with you. This is his second spell with Grimsby. He spent five years previously with them between 2011 and 2016. Did obviously a very good job with Shrewsbury Town then since then hasn't done the best job. You know he's moved to Ipswich didn't work out when he took uh, Inciala and John Nolan with him there. Simply didn't work out. He won one game in 15 there. Scunthorpe again wasn't the greatest spell. He's done alright obviously with Grimsby to get them promoted back up into League 2 but as an actual League 2 EFL manager he hasn't really done it to be honest with you apart from that spell with Shrewsbury now I don't know what league Grimsby were in in this 2011 to 2016 period so I can't comment on that so I'm going to have to disregard that for now but Shrewsbury like I said did a very good job in getting them to a League 1 player final that is absolutely incredible what he's done then but since then since 2018 has he done anything in the EFL I'm going to say no I'm going to put Paul Hurst in average for now but that is definitely one that could change next up then is Simon Weaver at Harrogate Town. Now, he must have done a good job there. He's been in charge for 13 years now. He's obviously got two years left on his current contract. Been in charge for 4,796 days. He's done an absolutely fantastic job at Harrogate. There is no way a club like Harrogate should be in the Football League. There should be nowhere near it for the size of their club. He has done an absolutely fantastic job. Not quite done enough yet to keep them into that excellent category. I think if one day he does get them into League One, he more than deserves to be in that excellent category, but I feel like that'd be a little bit harsh on Mark Hughes to put him in the same category as someone like a Simon Weaver but all due respect has got to be taken because he's done an absolutely fantastic job for Harrogate. If you are interested in going the extra mile to support the channel then feel free to become a member and unlock members only videos, receive early access to videos, you can get a shout out in every video also you'll be able to access exclusive member badges and emotes as well as other exclusive content. Prices start from as little as 99p thank you very much for your support Next up then is Paul Hartley the new Hartlepool manager bit of an interesting one because he's never managed in England he's had four stints at four different clubs over in Scotland done very well with Dundee and Cove Rangers in terms of longevity did all right at Allo Athletic as well he has moved to Hartlepool but because he's never really managed in the EFL or he's never managed in England before it's hard for me to really to comment so I'm going to put him in average could potentially put him in unproven as a league two manager that's something that might cause a bit of debate Hartlepool fans let me know your thoughts on this appointment down in the comment section down below next up then is Richie Wellens of Leighton Orient he's a bit of a hit and miss sort of manager. He does well with one club, then doesn't do the greatest with another. I thought he did all right at Oldham. Obviously, he did a fantastic job with Swindon. I actually personally thought he did all right at Salford and was harshly sacked, to be honest with you. Had an absolutely horrendous time with Doncaster Rovers. I think he's done decent with Leighton Orient. I think Richie Wellens is a good manager at this level. Definitely does need to get it right this time with Leighton Orient or he could be sliding down this table because he's been, been a bit hit and miss, to be honest with you. But at League 2 level, he's proven that he's more than capable of doing it. Has been linked with my team, Bradford City, on a couple of occasions when we have previously sacked managers hasn't worked out and from that point of view for him as of yet I'm sure he'll be looking to take that next step in his career now get Leighton Orient promoted but with the squad that they've got I definitely do expect them to be up there next season next up then is Mansfield manager Nigel Clough I think he's a, a very good manager for this level one that definitely
definitely can compete with the top category. To be honest with you, done very well at Derby. Did all right as well at Sheffield United. Obviously, did very well at Burton, despite his record there stating that he's done poorly. I thought he did a very good job with Burton, apart from the final season, uh, to be honest with you. He obviously got his move to Mansfield Town, where he did, he's done a very good job with them so far. First season was a bit of a just kind of steady the ship and make sure they survive. Last season, I thought he did a very good job considering their circumstances. Obviously, their squad is one year older now. They have got a very old squad, but it seems to work for Nigel Clough. And for me personally, I think he's one of the managers that de definitely can compete with Hughes and Harris. I'm going to put Nigel Clough in the excellent category. Next up then is James Robbery of Newport County. A bit hard to say, to be honest with you, as this is his real only first proper job as a manager. He obviously joined Newport when Michael Flynn resigned as Newport manager. Managed 35 matches, won 15, lost 13. He's done all right, but nothing fantastic. I think Newport obviously had a very good squad last season. Dom Telford scoring 25 plus goals last season. They were still nowhere near the playoffs. I think from that point of view, could you maybe argue that he's not coaching them defensively to be good enough? Or do you think that because of how many goals Telford was scoring, it was leaving them vulnerable at the back? Kind of hard to say as this is only his real first job as a manager. He hasn't had a summer to himself yet. So it's a bit hard to say. I think overall for now, I'm going to put him in the average category I'm not I don't know maybe poor I'll put him in average for now but definitely one that we could change because I think with Newport squad he should be doing a lot better with that but because he hasn't had a full summer transfer window maybe he hasn't had his time to get his ideas across I'm not too sure a bit of an interesting one Newport fans let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below next up then is Northampton Towns John Brady did a good job last season but the season before that was an absolutely horrendous time for Northampton Town he was obviously appointed as their manager on the 10th of February 2021 he's done a Right with them one more games than he has lost but I feel like there's just something that isn't quite there for me with John Braid. I don't know if it's ne his negative approach to football. Obviously, his teams are very much uh, try and get a 1-0 sort of win. And whilst it worked for the majority of last season, they did end up getting you know failing to get promoted when with some of the players that they have lost as well. I expect them to st really struggle next season if they don't improve on them players. I know they've replaced some players with like Lee Burge coming in for Liam Roberts. Wouldn't say that's an improvement though. So they definitely need to you know keep uh, improving and keep developing. I think Danny Hilton is a good sign as well. But but overall for me, John Brady, I think he's a poor manager. I know that fit might come as a massive surprise considering that, you know, they finished fourth last season, got to a playoff semi-final. But with a squad Northampton had last season, I think failing to get promoted was an underachievement. And that's all we can really judge him on because he has only had that one job with Northampton Town. Next up then is Robbie Stockdale of uh, Rochdale. Sorry, now I think everybody knows my opinion on him. With the squad Rochdale had last season, the fact they were... Well, I wouldn't say they were struggling for relegation, but they were just doing nothing, really. They are in the lower part of mid-table throughout the majority of the season. Lost a lot more games than he has won. Robbie Stockdale is the second manager to go into Dinosaur for me. Just simply not a good enough manager at this level. Next up, then, is Neil Wood of Salford City. Obviously, has been with Manchester United and Aston Villa in his previous managerial career. This is his first managerial job, though, as a full-time manager, first-team sort of coach. So, can't really comment all too much on that. We're going to have to put him into the unproven category category because he simply hasn't managed uh, any proper EFL games yet so I'm gonna have to put him into that bottom category next up then is Steve Ridge manager Steve Evans he has obviously had a lot of jobs throughout his career his first five jobs he was actually with all them clubs for over a thousand days so very impressive from that point of view but I think with Steve Nidge, I think he's going to do a decent job I think wherever he's gone he's definitely done decent for that level. You know, he's had some jobs where they've been a little bit hit and miss, but if you look at his record, apart from Gillingham, where I think he did, I, I still think he did a fantastic job at Gillingham, considering the resources that he had to get them pushing towards the playoffs in that season where it was behind closed doors, I think he's an absolutely fantastic achievement for Steve Evans. I think Steve Evans is a good manager. I know he's definitely somebody that spikes controversy and spikes debate, especially amongst the Bradford City fan base, but for me personally, I think Steve Evans is a good manager at this level. Next up then is Stockport manager, Dave Shallon. And that was a bit hard to comment on because he hasn't really managed too much in the AFL. Obviously, did a very good job with File, did a fantastic job with Hartlepool, getting them promoted back into the AFL. Moved down to Stockport where he did an absolutely fantastic job. 25 wins and only six losses last season is absolutely incredible. When I watched Stockport play League One Bolton in the FA Cup, I went to that game at the Bolton ground. It was absolutely fantastic watch. Stockport, you could then genuinely not tell that they were two divisions below Bolton Wanderers. Obviously, I know they've spent money and they've got a very good squad. Even this season, they've spent very good money 
money and, you know, brought in players like Callum Camps to League Two. Fantastic signings and all that sort of stuff. But I still think you've got to get the best out of your players. You know, it's all well and good buying good, expensive players, but sometimes it doesn't always work out. We've seen that with clubs like Ipswich in the past, just as an example that it doesn't work. But Dave Schawiner, for me, is a good manager at this level. Next up then is Sutton manager Matt Gray. Now, very similar to Simon Weaver, the job he has done has been absolutely fantastic. Sutton should be nowhere near the EFL, and he has done an absolutely incredible job to get them into the position that they are. So for that reason, I'm going to have to put him into the good category. Next up then is Scott Lindsay of Swindon Town. Now, this is his first ever managerial job. He's been assistant manager at Swindon, Chatham and Forest Green. He's had a few conditioning coach jobs as well, so hard to really comment on. He's never managed a first team match. I'm going to have to put him into that unproven category. He has obviously stepped up as Swindon's manager with Ben Garner moving on to Charlton Athletic, so hopefully for their sake this season he does a very good job, but he just simply is an unproven manager at this level. Next up then is Mickey Mellon of Tramia Rovers. This is his second stint as the Tramia Rovers boss. He was obviously with them for four years previously. Failed to get the promoted last season. I still think overall it was a uh, not a successful season for Tramia Rovers. You know, he needs to be doing better with the squad that they have. Had a spell over at Dundee as well in between his two Tramia jobs. Can't remember this stint with Shrewsbury. But overall for me, is Mickey Mellon an inspiring manager? No. So for that reason alone, I'm going to put him into the average category. I just don't think he plays any attacking football. He definitely wants to defend first. And when that doesn't work out for him, you know, you saw it last season. There was a lot of um, uh, debate and controversy surrounding him because the Tramia fans weren't really sure if he is the right man for the job. I know he's a bit of a club legend there. Got them promoted previously. You know, I remember when Connor Jennings scored that goal against Newport. Did a fantastic job from that point of view, but last season didn't work out for him whatsoever. They'll be looking for automatic promotion this season and, you know, fingers crossed for their sake, they are able to do that. And the final manager then is Michael Flynn of Walsall. Did an okay job with Newport County, but failed to get them promoted in the end. In the four seasons that he was with them for three seasons, I'm not really too sure. He was there for, you know, more than enough time to get them promoted. Had a couple playoff visits, but didn't really work out for him. He's gone to Walsall, and he did all right for them towards the back end of last season. But obviously, got a lot of players in through the door. I think they've got 12 signings in now, something like that. They've got a ridiculous amount of signings through the door, and if it doesn't work out for him this season, definitely could think his stock is on the way down. I think overall, though, for this level, Michael Flynn, he's, he's an okay manager, nothing too special, so I'm going to put him into that average category. If there was to be anything that I would change, potentially Paul Simpson, into the good category, potentially Paul Hurst, maybe move him about a little bit, but it's kind of hard for me to say because I was basing some off of the previous CVs, but I think it's different between the CV when you've been managing in the Premier League and you've never managed outside of the Premier League compared to what you've done in the National League, if that makes sense for a League 2 manager. But they are just my thoughts. I'm sure you will disagree, so let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. But that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, a like as always will be massively appreciated. If you could try and hit 70 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers. So make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. Feel free to check out the channel membership scheme as well if you haven't already received early access to videos, longer videos, exclusive content, or loads of different perks over there on the channel membership. So feel free to get involved in that if you are able to. Shout out to our current tier 2 channel member, Joe006, and our current tier 3 channel member, BDAVs211. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a great rest of your day, and I shall see you all very soon for another video. Peace.